do you mind just explaining this trial to me? Um, so this is a trial testing whether an infusion of umbilical cord blood can help uh, reduce symptoms in children with autism. And the trial is constructed so that um, two out of every three children get treated with cord blood. And in the cord blood group, they're equally divided between kids who get their own cord blood infused uh, versus children who get cord blood from an unrelated donor. Um, and then that group is randomized against a group of children who are treated with placebo, which is an infusion of pink fluid that has the same cryopreservative in it that cord blood would have when it's frozen. Um, the children get treated at baseline after a series of evaluations and then come back six months later, are reevaluated and also cross over. So the children who received cord blood receive placebo, and the children who receive placebo receive cord blood. But the study is blinded, so no one knows what um, their child received or what order the infusions were done in. Wow. Um, what are you finding so far? Well, the study's blinded, so we don't have any results other than safety results at this point. Um, the study enrolled 178 children, um, and they're all now in the follow-up phase. And the last child will be seen in August of 2018. And then next fall, we'll analyze the data, and then we'll have some answers. But the study is powered to answer two questions. One is, do cells help children with autism? And the second is, if cells help, is there a difference between uh, using a child's own cells or using donor cells? Yeah, so we, we performed what we call a phase one study, which is a safety study in 25 children with autism who were all infused with their own cord blood. And the results of that study are published, but we use that study for three reasons. One, to determine um, if it was safe to give a child an infusion of their own cord blood, and we did find it was safe. Uh, two, we wanted to define the best tests to use for the endpoints of subsequent trials because there are a lot of different ways to measure behavior, speech, um, and other sorts of symptoms in children with autism. And we wanted to kind of test which ones would work the best in a clinical trial. And we did identify several that we took into the trial I just described that's ongoing now. And then third, we looked just to be able to describe how the children did, and we found that about 70% of the children improved getting their own cord blood infused, and that that improvement was uh, present at six months and sustained at 12 months. Um, and we didn't follow the children any longer than that, so that's the data we have so far. Well, if that study that I described with the 178 children randomized to cord blood or placebo shows that cord blood is beneficial, um, we will uh, plan to talk with the FDA about how uh, to expedite getting this kind of therapy approved for all children. And we know we will have to run another clinical trial called a phase three clinical trial but the exact design of that trial will be negotiated with the FDA after we have the phase two data. Um, hopefully the phase three trial could be conducted over a couple of years, and the goal at the end of that trial would be um, to have either autologous and unrelated, or whichever one works of those approved for uh, children with autism as standard of care and practice of medicine. Wow. Where does your passion for this uh, project come from? 
So I've been working in the field of pediatric blood and marrow transplantation for uh, many, many years. And um, in that work, uh, we treat children who have a kind of disease called leukodystrophy, which is a genetic disease where children um, have abnormalities in the brain, usually associated with uh, uh, defects in forming myelin, which is like the coating of the nerves in the brain. And we learned from transplanting those children with cord blood that cord blood cells could get to the brain and repair damaged um, nerves and tissues. And that gave us the idea that maybe using a child's own cord blood might also help in certain types of diseases like autism or cerebral palsy. And so one thing kind of led to the other. Um, I also worked with autistic children when I was in college, so I kind of, going way back, had some familiarity with the, with the disease and the challenges and felt the medical need uh, to find a therapy that might be beneficial. Um, <laughs> it's a big responsibility. Um, it's rewarding at one level, but, but also I think puts um, the onus on us to be sure that um, the therapy that we're testing really does work um, because we are as motivated uh, as the families to find something that's going to help their children, but we also don't want to mislead them or you know, prematurely think something works that actually does not. Um, we've heard a lot of encouraging stories from the families of the children on our trial. And, um, you know, once we break the blind, as we call it, so we know which children received cord blood at the beginning and which children received placebo, then we'll really be able to, um, I hope, confirm that the cord blood is helping. and. That will be very exciting um, because I know how challenging it is to have a child with autism and up until this point there really hasn't been a therapy that could really modulate behavior. Yeah, I think there's a lot of hope. Um, I don't think it will stop with cord blood. There are other types of cells we're testing. But I do think that um, cell therapy is, um, at least at a preliminary stage, looking like it's really going to make a difference in the disease. Other things that we're going to have to explore is you know, how young um, a child can we treat. And that's going to depend on how early the diagnosis can be made. Because I think we all believe that um, if this therapy is helpful, it's going to be most helpful uh, in the youngest children where you can perhaps really cure the disease. Wow. Um, I'm just about out of questions. One is, do you mind explaining um, compassion care? And if, if parents see this and they're not in the trial, um, what can they do or what suggestions do you have for them? Yeah. So. Um, we opened a protocol also under an IND with the FDA called an expanded access protocol. And expanded access is a mechanism that the FDA has to provide care or access to treatment for patients who have a disease that might benefit before the treatment is actually proven to work. Um, and so we did open an expanded access protocol for children with autism and cerebral palsy who have their own cord blood um, and who also are not eligible for a clinical trial. And those children um, can apply or their families can apply uh, to come to Duke for treatment. The problem we're having, honestly, is we've had so many families reach out to us 
that we just don't have the capacity to get them in quickly. So a lot of people are frustrated um, because you know we, we have a waiting list and a long waiting time. And we are hoping to um, address that as best we can, but really the real way we're gonna solve that problem is to get these therapies approved so that the clinics all around the world can use them and um, people don't just have to come to Duke for therapy. Wow. Um, for, for people or couples who are hoping to get pregnant or for families who want another child, how important can we stress, um, how important is saving the cord blood? Yeah, so um, I don't know yet. So if our studies show that the best results come from using a child's own cord blood, then I would say it's very important to save the cord blood because there's no way to predict if a baby at birth uh, will or will not have some of the problems that cord blood is being used to treat. On the other hand, if donor cord blood works, then there already are public banks around the world where moms have donated their baby's cord blood for the use of any child in need. And the units from those banks can also be used to treat these children. So um, I think it's very important in general to save cord blood, but I can't say today whether it um, is more important to save it for yourself or more important to donate, um, uh, because we don't have all the answers for me to be able to answer that question. No, I, I think I'd like all the families to know we're working as hard as we can to go as fast as we can to get answers so that we can, again, help children in need, particularly if this therapy is effective. Um, we have to follow the rules and kind of go through a process that's required by the FDA so that we know this therapy is both safe and effective. And it's very hard to wait, and we know that. But um, at the end of the day, it's the, the best way to, if you will, win the race and get therapy to all the kids in need.